for wide is the gate, stopping in the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter it, and shall not be able. When once the master of the hound is risen up, and is shut to the door, and begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. He shall answer and say unto you, I know you're not what you are. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in the presence, and thou hast in our street. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you're not what you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and national teeth. When you shall see the harmonize the conviction of all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves first out. And also a passage found back in the book of Matthew chapter 7. Verse 13. When are ye in at the straight gate? For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there at. Because straight is the gate, and now is the way which leadeth unto life. You there be that find it. We came into this world, hit it out. You came from your mother's room, headed to the graveyard. And as a result of it, you're on that pilgrimage now. Some of our pilgrimage is nearing an end. And some of us may be nearer than we think. He tells in the book of Hebrews that it's appointed in the man wants to die. After that, the judgment. Appointed the man to die. After that, the judgment. You say, why die? Get rid of this old carcass that's subject to disease, subject to lust, subject to decay, subject to sin, subject to seducing spirit, subject to in so many different ways, subjects, in so many things. That we might die and lose all of that. And get a body that was like our grandpa Adam had. Without any of the afflictions or fevers or pains or seducing spirits or doctrines of devils. Nothing bothered him until he ate the forbidden fruit. If we had to live all of our lives, all of eternity, in these carcasses, what a terrible, terrible experience it would be. We can hardly stand them 40, 50, 60, 70, maybe 100 years. But if we had to live in them for thousands of years, some bedridden with sores and couldn't live, couldn't die, just have to live on in the sore, some with Nothing more than vegetables, so to speak, and paralyzed, some drawn and blind, and crippled, deformed. All of eternity. No, God made fix it to where he could have an appointment where we could die. And thank God that we can die. So we come this little pilgrimage. God put the share. Let us know that we were headed to the graveyard. Not if you're going to raise that question as to whether you're going to die or not, lest Jesus come. You would not argue that for one minute, that you're going to die. Rich and poor, intelligent, ignorant, young and old, die. Matter of fact, more young folks die than there are old folks. You doubt that go to the cemetery and count the tomb. But there it is. We know as sure as you're sitting in this church tonight that you're headed to the graveyard. You come out of your mother's womb and headed towards the grave. 
And as a result, that at our at appointment comes, you're going to keep it. You may not keep some appointment, but the one to death, you're going to keep it. Regardless of what you believe, what you think, the infidels have died, atheists have died, blasphemers have died, God haters have died, all other kinds have died, kings and queens. You're going to die, and I'm going to die. When? When? You say, preach, I don't know. Neither did I, and I'm glad I don't. But one thing for sure, you know you're going to die. Then right after that, you're going to come to the judgment. To be judged of what? For the way you treated God and his kingdom and his church. So as a result, we're here there. Just one death between you and there. You see, after all, we don't know when the next breath won't come. Just one breath between me and you in eternity tonight. We got blood banks. The blood goes bad. They got some blood down at the hospital. They can put in your and take it, keep it going. Kidney banks. Eye banks. But they haven't got any blood banks yet. I mean, any breath banks yet, pardon me. And my friends, as a result of it, you just get one breath at a time, and God decides to withhold the next one. He's going to be in God's arm and make him give you another. So it behooves us to recognize the fact that we're headed to the graveyard just as sure as you've been born in the world. You came out of your mother's womb headed to the grave. You came out headed in. And God set two roads in front of us. Two ways in front of us. Right way, wrong way. Blessed way, cursed way. Life way, death way. Heaven way, hell way. We've all got those two things facing us. As you came and stepped out in this earth, into this world, there's two ways open up to you. One was heaven, the other was hell. One is right, the other is wrong. One is blessed, the other is cursed. But you decide which way you're going to travel. God believes that for you. Mama, nor daddy, nor the preacher, nor the church, nor God, nor the devil. Decide which one you're going to travel. You're left there to make your decision. You can choose the heaven way, the blessed way, the life way, or you can choose the hell way, the cursed way, the terrible way. It's up to you. So, my friends, there's no doubt that what we're all going to make our exit in this world. This is not our permanent address. This is not our permanent living quarters. We are just here temporary to make preparation to have a decent place to live in when we leave here or to mess up life so that we're not fit for a decent place and be cast in hell because we're not fit for decency. What are you doing? Messing your life up, living such a life, living so ungodly, so wicked and so hellish that you're fit for nothing but hell when you die? Or you're living a life that will be acceptable in the sight of God as decent and as clean and as fit for heaven? It's up to you to decide that. That's been a question. If a man dies, shall he live again? Yes. So the disciples came to Jesus and said, Master, I want to ask you something. Are there few that be saved? And he said to the man, Try to enter in at this straight gate, for many I say unto you will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. 
And once the master of the house is first look and shut through the door and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door. Saying, Lord, Lord, open to us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you're not what you are. Then you shall begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. Thou hast taught in our streets, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you're not what you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Then listen to what Jesus said. He there be that either there is. The disciples said, Master, is there just going to be a few folks say? He said, that's right. There's going to be a few. Now I want to raise this question tonight. Are you one of the few? That's going to end in the straight game. Are you one of the few that's been saying? If you are, you ought to be so grateful to God you never quit praising him. And you never quit living for him. And you never quit honoring him with your life. When you look about you, see how many people are in the gutter tonight. Deteriorated, degenerated, blighted, cursed, drunken, homosexual, whoremongers, liars, alcoholics, harlots, prostitutes, murderers, rapers, all down there in the gutter. The only reason you're not there, ladies and gentlemen, and lads and lasses, is the fact that you got saved. And that's enough to shout over the rest of the journey. And so Jesus is simply saying, there's few who answer the question. Maybe say, in the end, the straight gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and neither there be what's going there at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. Do you look at the mass of people in the city of Spartanburg and adjoining areas? How many do you know that are real Christians? How many do you know of living worthy of going to heaven? Then, what about the multitudes that's left outside of that crowd? So, if you're one of the ones that God has seen, then you ought to so live that it honor God. And glorify him through his church and his kingdom. Strive! Put forth any effort. It's worth any struggle. Strive! It's hard to live a Christian life. It's a struggle to live a Christian life. But thank God, it's only a short little span of life. And then we don't have no trouble with nothing else. Yes, it's a struggle. Yes, it's strife. Striving, struggling, fighting, suffering, sacrificing, going through with a lot. But thank God it's only a few years span. And then it's different. It's worth the struggle. It's worth the striving. So as a result, Jesus is saying this. In the end, it's a straight gate. He put the chicken in it to straight and narrow way. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads instruction in many of our be which go in there at. But the one that leads to life, see there be. But find it. Somebody said, not long ago, what do you want to be hooping in the hall and shouting all the time for? I said, I'm in the narrow road. I'm one of the few that he picked. Don't ask me why he picked me. I don't know. But I think quit long enough and shouting to tell you why he picked me. I'm picked. I'm chosen. And my friends, I'm saved. And I'm in the straight and narrow way. I'm in that few peculiar oddball that the 
squares and everything else that you want to call them. I'm one of that few. I'm in that crowd. And I'm not ashamed of it. And I'm not afraid of it. I want you to know tonight. I have no apology for being in that few, that peculiar bunch, that odd bunch, that odd ball. I'm glad I'm in it. If you try to hear me up about it, they'll shout on you. Why do you do it? My friends, there's two ways. There's two things. There's two ways. He said, my friends, strike in at the straight gate. In the distance, there are two gates. That means there's two different cities or two different places. Uh, there's all these walls around it. Beyond these gates and walls, there's a hidden from view of the dwelling place and the habitation of people. People. You don't see it. But there's two gates and two directions. The road that leads to each place and to each gate. Then if there's a gate, there's a city. There's a Gates is a wall. And Jesus said in one of those places, the gate is straight and narrow. And you have to strive to get in it. The other way is broad. Easy to travel. And easy to get in. But Jesus said you better strive to get in at the straight gate. We realize behind, therefore, beyond those gates is human habitation. We cannot see. The world's hard out of view right now. He said one gate is wide and broad and ample. Many can enter in at any one time. My friends, the broad gate is so broad. The broad way that leads to the broad gate is so wide that many can travel that road at one time. The other is so straight and so narrow that just a few can get on. No need of it being wide because there's not many things going to go that way anyhow. But there's a need for the oven to be wide, my friends. The reason is, for to being a wide gate and a broad road, is that the city itself is inhabited by the more majority of the human beings that have lived and will live. There's so many going that way, in and that gate, in and that place, that it's necessary for it to be wise. If you doubt it, look around you. As I said in the beginning, look how many people going to hell around you. They're not answering Jesus Christ, not answering the Bible, God, and nothing else. But the world. If you doubt it, go talk to them. Go mention it to them. And see how interested they are. So we start to realize, my friends, it's larger. It's more inviting. It's more attractive. It's more exciting. Because the broad way, my friends, they say, well, everybody else is living like them. Everybody else is doing that. Everybody else is going that way. Now, I don't want to be marked an oddball or chicken or square. So I'm going with them. But the word of God said, Thou shalt not go with the multitudes to sin. So the multitudes are going to sin. And if you're going with them, you're going to sin. You want to run with the multitudes because you want to run with the sin stuff. You want to live a sin life. You want to sin and satisfy your carcass, your flesh, your eyes. Yo, devilish desire. That's if you want to be in the crowd. You don't want to be straight and follow the straight and the narrow path. You want to follow the crowd. Everybody's traveling the world. 
My beloved, we stop to realize it's being enlarged. The book of Isaiah said the big city is being enlarged. Because so many more people are going that it has to be enlarged to hold them. But the other city is not being enlarged. You have the exact footage of it. God tells you exact size of it. But you don't have the size of hell. All the things you're instructed out of the book of Isaiah, that it's being enlarged. God's making it bigger. Because so many people are disappointing God and going that way. The gate is, that leads to the narrow way. It's confined. It looked from a distance as if it didn't only look one at a time. It's unattractive. It's been spit upon. It's got blood on it. It's got thorns on it. And it looks like that beyond it, there's nothing of attraction. It looks like it might be a ghost place. With all that the green has on it. So narrow. So hard to get through. And so few going. Struggling. Laughed at. Spit on. Persecuted. Called names. Rejected and despised. Don't want to have their company. That little few travelers. Looks like beyond that gate there must not be much to go to. Looks like it must be a sort of a ghosty thing. So few people are crying. So few people are traveling it. So it looks rather odd. Jesus was despised. He was rejected. He had no form of comeliness that men should accept him. He was spit upon. There was the thorn. There was the rough wood of the cross. That makes up the door that enters into the straight and narrow way. The Lord, the wide gate, there stretches a broad road, ample room on it for all travelers. Easy to travel, my friends, down the broad road. It's downhill. It's got bright light. Our depraved natures and seducing spirits are leading us with the crowd. And everybody is traveling it. All sorts of excitement. All sorts of entertainment. Takes no effort to go. Everybody else is going. Everybody else is living like that. There's a bright light. There's, there's a lot of excitement. A lot of sensation. And, and, and our depraved nature naturally pulls us that way. Seducing spirits are tugging at us to come on. Everybody else is living like this. Everybody else is enjoying sin. But you want to be an oddball. But you want to be a chicken and staff. So come on, come on. We're having a time. The lights is bright. The excitement is high. Everybody's traveling that way. Anybody that wants to can go down that road if you please. My friends, there it is. You don't have to do anything but go to hell. Just do nothing. Sit down and do nothing. You don't put forth any effort to go down the broad road. Don't you pray, spirit, and pull you down there. You don't have to put forth any effort to go down the broad road. The seducing spirits of God will pull you down there. They'll seduce you. They'll push you. They'll pull you. You don't have to do no effort to get on that broad road. None whatsoever. And then, my friends, as a result of it, you can just drift. You can call this down here. There's no effort. My beloved, even kind of people can travel and enter the broad gate. Don't make any difference who you are, what you are. You can go down the broad road. Any kind of people. Drunkards, murderers, harlots, gamblers, Whores, whoremongers, 
rapers, liars, adulterers, blasphemers, God haters. Oh, you see, you can be anything you want to be. You can hate God. You can blaspheme God. You can satisfy your sex caucus. You can do anything. You can live a life in the hell or hell among a prostitute. You can hate God. You can rebel on God. You can get drunk. You can gamble. You can lie. You can steal. You can rape. You can murder. You can live any way you want to live. Go on down that road. Hey, to travel the broad road, you don't have to put the brakes on nothing. You can do anything you want to do. You can do anything you're big enough to do and little enough to do. There's no brakes put on. Going down that way. There's nothing to put on in the brakes. Live like you want to live. Do what you want to do. Act what you want to act. Do what you want to be. Hate God, hate God, preachers, hate God, church, hate right living, rebel on God, rebel on the Holy Ghost. You can do anything you want to to go to hell. You don't have to put the brakes on. No, no, no. Just help yourself. Be as mean as you can be, as long time as you can be, as sorry as you can be, and act as ugly as you can act. Rebel as much as you want to rebel. You're going to hell anyhow. Get so filled with the dry on your own. So Go on, go. My friends, I'll go on that road to all the hypocrites. You didn't want to be in the church. They're going to hell. Then these self-righteous good folks that rejected Jesus Christ. And I'm good enough. I'm good as the church members. I'm good as the deacons. I'm good as that bunch of dirty preachers. I'm good as the rest of them. I'll go. Yes, you'll go to hell. That's where you'll go. That's the kind that's going to hell. That good crowd. That good bunch is better than anybody else. You're good for nothing but hell, that's all. Patient. You can do anything you want to be. You can live as clean as an angel, still go to hell. You can live a pure life and still go to hell. You still go to hell. The road's broad. Looks like that body's going that way anyhow. Giant in with them and go ahead. It's open. Every kind of force in the world pushing on you, pulling on you. Every enticing thing you can be for others, seducing you. Satisfy the lust of the eyes, satisfy the appetite, satisfy the lust of the flesh. No breath, no breath. Go ahead and indulge in all of it. Go on and live your life, fellas. You're going to hell in the house, you might as well stay at the breaks and get all the rest of the devil. You're going to hell in the house, go ahead with hell. Go ahead and become a sex pervert. Go ahead and become a drunkard and a murderer and a kidnapper and a raper and a liar and a dead and a down. Do everything in the book and help things set. You go into hell, you better have your good time here because it ain't going to be so good when you get there. Well, you want to try to live right through, you want to hell. Well, you want to try to be decent for you're going to hell. You're going to hell with all indecent people. You're going to hell with all the mean folks. What do you want to try to be good for? Just stay off your bricks and get your set going and do everything you big enough and little enough to do. Help yourself, fellas. Live your life for the devil and the world. Get so still of it. Because when you get in hell, you've had it all then. Go ahead. Lord Burton. And he said that his time is gone. So just go ahead. Jump in. My friends hate God. Despise the church and God's folks. Then towards the stage of marriage, they extend to marry a pathway. It's very difficult to find. It's very hard to keep. The wings are rough. Opposition is rough. Two companions on that road. You just see one once in a while struggling along. They're having difficulty. They're laughed at and spit on and persecuted and ridiculed, lied on, pushed around, ignored. People don't want to have company with you. Straight. You're oddball. You're narrow. Some folks say that you're Samaritan. So it's happy to get through the narrow gate. But you broad-minded livers and broad-minded thinkers, 
Your old brain going to be so bad you get up there you can't get through the gate. I want you to realize in comparison to the broad road, it's rough. And if you look, my friends, and see it, the sacrifice on this road, it's the only road. Don't see the folks on it. You're cursed and you're hated by the devil's crowd. You're made fun of by the devil's crowd. You despise. You're looked down on. You're called weak-minded and sissy and salty. Our balls. Yes. My friends, we look again and we see that then we're facing the other gate that is straight and narrow. Each of these gates, my friend, leads to a corresponding way. The straight gate is narrow. It's hard to travel. But listen to me, my friends, as we think about it tonight inside the straight gate that you've sacrificed and pushed along to get there inside seems to promise nothing. There is that which Jesus calls life inside of it. True, real, where every power and every faculty that makes man know and feel that he lives. The life of God. The life of happiness. The life of an unlimited duration, un-insecurity. Therefore, in him is a straight gate. Struggle. Contend. Difficult. Time to get there, you'll be lifted, worn, scarred. And so unattractive. So hard to get in. But when you open up, you step on the street to go. When you go through that gate, there are streets of gold, pure gold. And as you go in, the angels of God meet you to usher you down the streets of gold. They carry you down and let you look at a river as pure as a crystal, thrown out under the throne of God. They let you see the throne of God. They lead you down beside the river where the trees bear poor man of fruit. You won't have to labor no more. You just pull the fruit off and eat it. You get to feed a little bit, you take some of the leaves and that kills you. Down by the river. And then, boy, my friends, you see back in beyond that little old narrow gate, there's a great city with many mansions in it. And there's the angels to wait upon you. And when you look around and you get in that city, go through that little old, squeeze through that little old door, which is Jesus Christ, the only door in it, all of a sudden you don't see no graveyard. You don't see no hospital. You don't see no funeral home. You don't see no cripples. You don't see no blind. You don't see no starving. You don't see no loss. You don't see no weeping. You don't see no cripples. You don't see no uh, deformed people. They're all perfect. There they are. And you go in a little trouble and the angels and God said, Come on, got something else to show you. They show you the great throne where God sits on and Jesus. And then said, Come on. And they go down and say, now that's your place where you will stay forever. That's your mansion. And I don't know what it would be like, but Jesus said he'd prepare. And he'd been 2,000 years preparing. It took him six days to make all you and I have ever seen. But now he's working 2,000 years. And my friends, you don't know what it's going to be like. But he said, when I get it fixed, I'll come back and carry you to it. Because you follow the straight and the narrow path. Because you come through the straight and the narrow door, you've got a match on, and it'll be tailor-made for you. It'll fit just what will make you the happiest to eternity. It'll be tailor-made for me. It'll fit me for what will make me happy to eternity. And then we'll have rewards for everything we've done. Every time we've served them, we'll have rewards. And about that time, when you think, well, I can't be no more glory, but a wonderful time, 
and then he'll take you down to another place and start crowning you with crowns. Crowns of righteousness, crowns of life, crowns of this, but fadeth not away. There'll be a crown in time, down in the new city. There's crowns to wear. They, then he said, you've been faithful over two things. I'll make the rule over many things. Take your throne. You're crowned for that too. And there'll be thrones to sit on. There'll be crowns to wear. There'll be no sickness. There'll be no good vibes, no funerals, no death, no torture, no devils, no devils, no demons, no darkness, no setting of the sun, no nothing unpleasant. There you are. There you are. There you are. Then my friends, you start reading and start striving it, isn't it? You don't look very enticing, does it? You don't look very pleasant to be a Christian, does it? No! Just wait till you get through the gate. You see that streets of gold. You see the ministering angels of God. And you see all God prepared for you. And realize the labor's over. You don't have to work anymore. You'll not have to go to the jobs anymore. We'll not have any deterioration. We won't have to grow nothing. We'll just eat the fruit. My friends, be no labor. Be no power. Be no nights to worry you. Be no sickness. Be no chilling friends. No poisonous death. Glory to God, the temperature remains the same forever. And we're kind of good when we get in it. There it is. One eternal day with no setting sun. Because the sun's not needed, the glory of the Son of the eternal God shall be our light by day and by night, and we'll live in the light forevermore. No demons, no devils, no torture, no misfortunes, or no nothing bad. It's all one eternal glorious day. Why? Through the straight and the narrow gate. Then look on the other side. My old friends, it's difficult to get to the straight gate. But thank God it's worth it when we get there. Then, inside the wide gate, inside the wide gate, you walk, and you walk, and all of a sudden, you walk, and when the gate opens, instead of your feet hitting on Gold Street, you sink down in a lake of fire. First thing you do is plunge in a lake of liquid fire. The waves of God's wrath begins to roll you like the tides in the ocean. No bottom. There it is. You look there, my friends, and you're down in hell. And when you get in hell, you'll find there's no place to get out at. It's a final state. You plunge off in there, and hell is an eternal place. And my friends, beyond the broad gate, there's no hope. There's no way to suicide out of it, nor get out of it. In hell, there's no dope to kill the pains. In hell, there's no, no hope for another day. In hell, my friends, there's no escape. You can't suicide out of hell. You can't die out of hell. You can't climb out of hell. It's an eternal place of lake and foreign brimstone. And I want you to know, as you've gone in there, you've gone in there with all the cussers, all the God-haters, all the blasphemers, all the sin-lovers, all the worldlers, all the good folks that rejected Jesus Christ, all the hypocrites, you're down there in hell with them. There they are, the killers, the war among us, the Hitlers, the Trojans, the Mussolini's, and all of the crowd. There you are in the eternal darkness, the eternal misery, suffering forever. Shame and contempt forever. It's everlasting. No honor in hell. No rest in hell. Dean and I, you can't sleep in hell. There's no peace in hell. There's no place of repentance in hell. You get to hell, you can't repent. There's no mercy in hell. There's no hope in hell. There's no crowns to be crowned with in hell. There's no thrones to reign on when you get in hell. You're not reign on any place. My friends, it's a lake of fire. And the fire is never quenched. Fire, fire, eternal fire, liquid fire, unquenchable fire. Whatever God does, it's forever. And you can't add anything to it or take anything from it. And when God turns the liquid flames of hell on, you can't cool them off. Those flames of hell is forever. 
the lakes of fire is forever, and the worms is forever. The worms never die. The fires never quench. Where? Down in hell. Where you headed, you broad road travelers. You headed, folks, going to have your way and rebel on God and resist God. And you chose the low road. You chose the cursing road. You chose the hell road. You chose the road away from God. And that's what you're going to get in the final analysis. You're going to be down on hell and all the hypocrites, all the God haters, all the infidels, all the atheists, all the agnostics, all of everything that's mean and wicked, all the dirty society, all of the filth of sin, down there with the demons and the devil and all his angels are down there in hell, and there's no way out. No way out. It's an eternal hell. It's an everlasting hell. There's no place, my friends, you can't suicide out of it. You get in trouble here and suicide. No way to suicide in hell. You say, I can't quit my drinking. You'll quit and you get in hell. I can't quit my drinking. You'll quit and you get in hell. I can't quit my sin. You'll quit them when you get in hell. But the passion for your face will run with heated desire and you can't satisfy your appetite for drinking. It aggravates you and irritates you. But no way to quench it. And my friend says the worm. Gnawing worms, gnawing worms, crawling worms, gnawing worms forever. There they are, wringing their hands, screaming, gnash your teeth, no hope, no hope, no way out, no place to pray in hell. If you did, it wouldn't be answered. No place to kneel in hell to ask for mercy. If you asked for mercy, it wouldn't be granted. You had to change that in hell and turned it down. Now you're in hell where there ain't no mercy, where there's no place of repentance, where there's no way out. Now you are down in the depths of the hell that will never be quenched, where the worms will never die, and you're down there where there's a fixed breath and there's no crossing either way. Once you're there, there's no way to get you out of hell. You went on the other side, and the, the, the death is so deep and so wide, you can't get no help from God and heaven nowhere else. You can't get out to get no help from nobody to come down to help you. Hell, eternal hell. Everlasting hell. There it is. Jesus Christ said, if your hands keep you in safe, cut it off. If your eyes keep you in safe, pull it out. If your foot keep you in safe, cut it off. It's better go to heaven without the organs of your body than it is to go to hell where the fire is. Never quench. Where that T-H-E-I-R personal one, never die. Worms, worms, Worms that can't never die. Fire that can't never be quenched. Fire, fire, eternal fire. Torturing fire, torturing worms. The pains of death. There you are, down in hell. There's all the God heaters, murders, lies, killers, dishonest, and everyone else down in hell. What in hell do you want to go for? What in hell do you want? What in hell are you after? What do you expect getting out of hell? That you want. What is in hell that you want? What in the hell is it you want? What do you want out of here? What do you want to go to hell for? What is in hell that you want? What do you expect to get out of hell anyhow? Is there anything in hell you want? You expect to get some out of hell you haven't got nowhere else? What do you want to go to hell for? You said, preacher, I don't want to go. Then they just wonder where to keep him going. Jesus said, as many as received him, to them gave he power to be the sons of God. He opened the road to heaven, to hell, the low and the high, the blessed and the cursed. The heaven and the hell. Hey, what do you want to go to hell for? What in hell do you want? What do you think? 
trying to get in hell for? What do you think you're going to get out of hell when you get there? What in the hell you want? You shine on. Then I want Jesus to make me a child of God. As many as received him, to, get, to them gave he power to be the sons of God. And if you get on your knees and pull up your heartstrings and receive him, you'll miss hell. I'm not going to tell you it's easy, it's not. But it's manly. It's sane and sensible. You get something when you get there. Streets of gold, life everlasting, peace, happiness, honor, security, crowns, thrones to him. Place where there's no death, and no devils, no disease, no hunger, no tears, no pain, no cripples, no blinds, no devils, no nothing unpleasant. Why don't you want to go that way? What in the hell do you want? You can't get nothing out of hell with what's in there. What would you want with what you get out of it? You get life out of those places. Peace. Happiness. Everlasting joy. Eternal day. No suffering. Which way are you headed tonight? We're going to sing just as I am without one to you. Thy blood was shed for me. Thou biddest me come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come. Would you come tonight?